Honey, I blew up the business. Welcome to the podcast. We're going across the pond to Chicago, and we've got Justin Breen on the line. Welcome, Justin. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a really interesting conversation with a, a 10 quick start. You're a 10 quick start, and I have high quick start and high follow through. So this will be super interesting. So Justin is referring to a Colbe score there, which is, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a 10. You check out Colbe score. A 10 apparently is quite rare. Very rare. Yeah, like so I'm a rare beast, as you well know. Uh, Justin's a really interesting character. He's got a great story to dig into. He's a multiple-time entrepreneur from Chicago in the US of A, and he leads two global companies, not one, but two, the only partner with the world's top visionary leaders. He's the founder and CEO of a PR firm called Brepic Communications, and also co-founder and CEO of Brepic Network, which we'll I think we'll get into. It's an invitation-only premium connecting platform for the who's who in business. And he's also the author of two best-selling books, Epic Business and Epic Life, And I've just finished Epic Life, and it's really epic. Uh, It's full of good energy. It's how to build collaborative global companies while putting your loved ones first, which is a really great ethic. Sometimes people forget, and we're going to get into that a little bit because there's a really great observation in in that book. Before we get into it, I just want to remind everybody that this podcast is brought to you by my company, The Tech Department. And that's the company I blew up, hence the name of the podcast. Five years ago, I blew it up in a bad way. But we did turn it around and things are actually going better than ever. So I'm on a mission to take that experience and all the things I've learned and to share that with you, the listener, and to help you avoid doing what I did. But to talk to people like Justin, real top entrepreneurs from all over the world, to share their true stories. So again, you can benefit from that. And if you like that mission, we're trying to help entrepreneurs. If you like that mission, please give us a kind of five-star review on Apple Podcasts or or your favorite podcast platform and share it with your pals and help us help other people. That'd be really a good thing to do. So um, without further ado, let's dive into it. I want to go back in time, Justin. I want to go back to February the 10th, 2017, where, where you had, in your own words, quotes, the feeling of utter hopelessness and panic, close quotes. So what was going on on February 10th, 2017? Well, probably the same thing that was going on for you. <laughs> uh, utter uh, panic, uh, bit blow up the business, feeling apart, you know, falling apart. Um, and I strongly feel that you're either born someone like like us or you're not. Um, like I think most people would want to be top entrepreneurs on planet, true visionaries, but um, to do that. I haven't met one person like us that hasn't overcome at least one of the following four things, most are two or three, and then higher up on the totem pole, it's all four. So those four things are bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, two, depression, three, the highest level of anxiety that you can imagine, and four, likely and or possible traumatic experiences as a child or young adult. So business owners, humans, consultants, those are excuses, top entrepreneurs on the planet, uh, you know figure figure it out. So um, February 10th, 2017, I was a a journalist at the time uh, in downtown Chicago and uh, had a five minute meeting um, with the company's uh, owner and managing editor. And they proceeded to cut my job salary in half. Uh, Two other folks were fired that day. Um, They cut my job salary in half. And so uh, with zero business background, I, you know, journalist for 20 years, no zero business background, never took an entrepreneur class in college, didn't even know what an entrepreneur was. Tried to find a full-time job, uh, couldn't find a job, um, incorporated April 16th, 2017. And then over the next six weeks while working full-time at half salary, reached out to 5,000 people to find first five uh, clients. Um, so one out of a thousand said yes and got the fifth client. I think it was June 1st, June 2nd resigned. And then uh, at the time, Robert Feeder, he was the top media columnist in the Midwest. He's since retired, which I think is actually interesting. Um, he did a story. I'd started my own firm. So that was to start the first company. That was just a, most people can't, they can't do that. They're not wired like that. So, you know, you blew up your company 2017. I would say my life was kind of blown up or career was blown up in front of me. And then you had to build, just build something else. Okay, just do it. It's interesting. It's very true. And it's kind of what happened to me. I, it was a kind of near bankruptcy, actually, going back to your four topics that I had. And you had this kind of thing imposed on you 
out of the blue. And I believe it was your 40th birthday uh, around that time. Correct. Yeah, that's um, that's good research. My 40th actual birthday was April 10th, 2017 and incorporated April 16th, 2017. And so this was during the process of trying to find a job and, you know, it's hard to find a job. Um, it's a black hole. Um, that kind of thing. It's really annoying. And for high quick starts like us, that's really annoying. But, um, so my wife surprised me for my 40th birthday with a, a trip to a, a really nice resort in Wisconsin. It's called, uh, the American club Kohler, uh, you know, the, the bathroom, uh, products Kohler is an actual town in Wisconsin and they have a five-star resort there. And so on the way up there, uh, I'm like, Oh, I'll just start a company and call it Brepic. Like, cause I like saying the word Epic and BR are the first two letters of my last name. So I'm like, Oh, I'll just incorporate. I didn't even know what that meant, but I'm like, I'll just, you know, start a company. And, uh, so then got back from the trip and then incorporated a few days later. So there's this, there's this period then from February the 10th, just before Valentine's day, it was your, the Valentine's day massacre of your career of 20 years. It's the, um, so you're, you just, so you go from February, March, April, you've got this three month period, a quarter. Yeah. Uh, you probably going to divide your, your life into quarters. Cause you, I don't, I don't, that's the other, I still don't, by the way, a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs do. They talk, I've never, I don't, understand that at all because like in, it's actually like a blessing and i you haven't asked your question i apologize but like i don't um because never took a business class or never like I, you don't go into journalism for that stuff like i never divided my life into quarters i just don't i don't think like that i don't really care about that stuff it's like the two things i ask myself every day is did i have i there are only two things i ask one is did i have a good experience that day with my family Every day, the answer to that is yes. And then the other one is did network grow on a global level? I found that all this other stuff kind of takes care of itself if those, the answer to those two things are yes. Interesting. Yeah. So that's kind of like a real discipline and habitual activity that creates the result. I, I want to come back to that, actually, because I like that. Yeah. This, there's this period of time, this three-month period, two or three-month period, where you have, you've had this 20-year journalist career, and you're in there, you're, you're about to go in with your boss, and the whole thing's got done a switcheroo from what you, I imagine you're heading into your fourth, 40th year. You've had 20 years doing this journalism thing. You think, yeah, I'm just going to go for a chat with the, the the big guy. No, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I could feel it. Yeah. So, but you come out, but you've got a, this period then. So, so, so when you're kind of feeling this sort of, um, you know, because you look back now and it's five years on and of course the way the thing pans out. But could you remember what it felt like that first month before you went on the resort trip? Before you went on the kind of, you know, okay, I'm going to do this thing. No matter like how kind of perhaps the away the idea was, what did that feel like that first month? You kind of, you, you got, you got a family, you're, you're just about to turn 40. All that kind of identity, you know, I guess you've built over 20 years has just collapsed or is collapsing. So what, what's, what was going through your mind then? Right. Uh, and it's a fair question. And again, that's why I get that question a lot and I'm glad it's asked. That's why I always answer it with the start of like, you're either born someone like this or you're not. So the overwhelming majority of society would use that as an excuse and ne never would have started their own business and certainly wouldn't have, you know, joined groups like Strategic Coach or, you know, uh, Abundance 360 or have someone like Peter Diamandis write Forbes for, but like that just wouldn't, that never would have, um, it wouldn't have happened. So I'm actually I'm actually glad now that it happened. I mean, February 10th, 2017 was the best day of my journalistic career and the worst day all in, it was in one moment. It was the best thing that's ever happened to me and the worst thing in, in professional career. Um, that's not even in the top 50 worst days as an entrepreneur, the feeling of that. Um, that's why most people can't, you know, they can't handle this life. So I, you know, what I will say, February 10th, 2017 to, I mean, certainly June 1st, 2017, um, when, you know, got that fifth client of those four things, it certainly was two of them. Um, the depression and the, I mean, definitely the highest level of anxiety that you can imagine. I mean, that's the ultimate, what I will say, and I can't stress how important this is, is that my wife is usually people, not always, usually people like us, very stabilizing humans, usually, not always, usually. 
And my wife is a pediatrician, the ultimate stabilizing human. And if I had not married someone like her, it would have been a much different, much different situation. And whenever I make a really, really big decision, like starting another company or writing a second book or making a big investment, something, the only opinion that actually matters to me is hers. And so she says, Oh, great idea. That's, that's really. And so when she's, when I started the first company, she's like, Oh, that's a great idea. You would be great at that. I'm like, okay, great. And that was a very comforting feeling. And the only one of those four of those four things that I've never had to worry about is bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, which I don't think knock on wood. I don't think I ever will. It'd be interesting if I did. I, I don't think I will, but I found the really, 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 really successful entrepreneurs. Most of them have gone through all four. Um, it's almost like a, it's almost like a requirement. <laughs> it's not a full requirement, but it, unless you come from like a high level entrepreneurial family or a lot of money or something, it seems like it's almost a requirement to go through all four of those. Mm, yeah, but I think well, a subtext of this podcast is you know embrace that stuff because ultimately for me anyway that was my big breakthrough of learning and, and and kind of having to go through that experience. Okay, so you're having this period of time where it's super high anxiety and you're depressed and you can't get any work and you've got this kind of uh, this, all the rubble of your previous career around you and, the and still doing story, yeah, still writing stories. Yeah, and so you're still doing this, but it's kind of like you're trying to figure out what happens next and how do you, you know, is it what's the right thing to do? And you, you've luckily got your wife to help act as a kind of orienting or encouraging um, component in your yes. life. So, so you, but then you went, so I'm, I'm, one thing I was curious about is you kind of made the decision to go for it and to build a PR firm, all right? So this, so what I'm, I'm interested in is, well, two things actually. One is the moment you, so you incorporated this thing and so legally it existed, right? But what was it, looking back at that time now, um, because obviously, again, you can post rationalize a lot of this stuff when you've gone through and perhaps organized your thoughts by going through programs and going through your activities. But what was the sort of instinctive responses to get you to phone? You, you phoned up 5,000 different people to get five clients. But so what was going on in like between incorporating the business and setting out? What were the kind of the things, the qualities in you or the, or the lessons that you've learned? Well, I mean, I appreciate that. And I'll say the same thing. You're either born like this or you're not. <laughs> most people can't. Um, most, they're not, they're not capable of doing that. I mean, they're just not. I mean, that's, most people would choose. What would be the qualities that, what, if people who aren't born like this, what are the qualities that makes you, if you're born with this, what yeah. are those qualities? Okay. Yeah. So I appreciate you reading the sec, you know, Epic Life. I appreciate that. And I'll, I'll talk about the first chapter of that because it answers, it answers your question the first line of my first book epic business is what the f am i going to do so <laughs> duh, and then you just do it right but um so here this is my litmus test um i have three litmus tests but the main one is my father who was 61 when i was born he was a world war ii hero and uh he'd be 100 102 if he was alive now he was shot down multiple times in combat many times without a parachute um, and you just get back in the plane. So he told me he died when I was 13. He told me, you know, when I had a conscious brain or memory told me in my family, the cream rises to the top. So every day the cream rises to the top. So you're either the cream that rises to the top or someone that won't get back into a plane without a parachute. I mean, so I just, you just do it. I mean, um, I don't understand excuses. Um, and then, you know, my mom was 27 when I was born. My dad in his late fifties, um, he was hit by a drunk driver, drunk driver killed instantly. My dad broke every bone in his body. And then my mom was his nurse. So my dad woke up in the hospital bed. My mom just told me this the other day, this wasn't in the book, but she just told me, she's like, he woke up and he thought he was dead. And then he thought she was an angel. And so, um, so they got married. And then most of my days talking to people like us, top entrepreneurs. I haven't met one person ever with more hustle than my mom ever, ever. I'm never, never. So ultimate survive and thrive. Um, my youngest brother died of a drug overdose. My mom has been in rooms after, you know, people have shot themselves in the head, she, her family members, she, and, uh, you know, figure it out. Um, she's never complained about it. Um, so that's my mom. And then my wife, uh, 
our first date was the day before she started medical school. So <laughs> if there's anything like this, it's, it's going through medical school rotations, residency. So, I mean, so what goes through my head is I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to make an excuse. I mean, it's, that's like, most people just don't understand that people like us do, but most people, they don't live in that world. That's why I spend my time either with my family or in that world. Cause I, I don't understand people that make excuses. You just do it. So that's, I mean, that's yeah. so, so almost in a way to kind of the, the, the event where you get your salary cut and you're facing this new thing got brought out of you, this aspect of perhaps that was in you. It was already there. I, I just didn't know it until I had job. So I mean, but, and, and you know what, that's a fair follow up as a journalist, as a journalist, that's a very competitive field. And so to get to Chicago as an editor reporter, that's very difficult. Very, very. So I spent 15 years before getting, before getting that job, getting essentially rejected by every Chicago media outlet. And then, um, that one came along and it was actually the perfect fit. Um, and it was, it, it, I loved it. Um, cause got to write about cool people changing the world and now get to write about and connect cool people changing the world. So nothing has changed at all in that regard, but it was a good, if anything's a good preparation besides like going through medical school, which I saw my wife do it's being a journalist because it's really competitive, terrible hours, uh, low pay for a long time. Um, for most of the, basically all of the time. So it's a good prep for being an entrepreneur in some capacity. So you've got this kind of moment where the, the, the lessons you've learned, which you did, perhaps didn't realize by doing a journalistic degree and getting to Chicago and getting to this kind of like competitive sort of very kind of red ocean, I suppose. Have you, have you ever heard of the, the book Blue Ocean Strategy where he talks about red ocean, like everyone's buying chunks out of each other and it's very competitive. And, uh, and Yeah, right. I don't it's, that, it's kind of a red ocean. Everyone's after each other. That's journalism. Yeah. yeah. So you, and you, and you take that and perhaps some genetic gifts or some uh, cultural gifts from your own family that is about a hustle and about going for it and about contextualizing sort of your own pain, perhaps and building on that. And you go off and you, and you, so you, you then, when, and I got this figure of 5,000, 1,000 people called to one client and you're kind of really grinding this out. And that, that feels like, you know, people talk about the grind, but it just feels like you had this period of time where you threw yourself at it and you got through that 5,000 people to get to this point where the business is going to start to be, uh, sustainable or perhaps it's, it's, a, it's a real business. So this is kind of, I'm curious this, because often when people's stories like with the, there's a kind of, there's a period of time of maybe six months or so from the February time through your birthday, through the incorporation of the business to the 5,000 people where you're kind of starting on this new trajectory. What was going through your head every day as you're kind of grinding that out? Well, as a journalist, um, you know, it was 10 to 12 hour days writing two to three stories on deadline. Um, and um, so entrepreneur world, many times it's, you know, looking at, you know, what are the next five years going to look like um, in journalism world is, can you get this done in five minutes? So every day kind of felt like that. And then waiting for, waiting for, folks to sign or meeting, 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 you know, reaching out via LinkedIn, email, text message. As a journalist, I had a very large following on social media. It's different than the following now, but it was a large following. So, you know, tens of thousands of folks and just reached out to as many of them as I could, any means possible. And, and it was a really interesting thing to see, just to see how that world worked because as a journalist, you're kind of the buyer for the most part. Like um, you can kind of do the stories that you want to do. And you have a lot of folks asking you to like, Oh, Hey, can you do this story on this person? Or have hey, got this great idea. Most of those get rejected. And then you flip it to <clears throat> um, people think I'm a really good salesperson. I don't think I am. Um, people say I am, I, I never looked at selling it. I don't really like to sell stuff. I'm just more of a buyer, but, um, that's probably from being journalist for so long. That's, that's actually interesting, but having to sell and being in a pure get to get to, to get that fifth client. And the reason why that was, is that 
the five client, what those paid equaled what I had been making prior to uh, job salary being cut on a month, month, on a monthly basis. So that's why it was the five client threshold. I'm like, well, that will give me enough runway at least for a month or two to, to really go all in on it. Um, so being in a pure get to get thing, that was a very unnatural, I'm not, that I'm not comfortable doing that. I really like to create value for people. So just directly asking in a get to get, which I think everyone is, I, I'm happy to talk about the four stages of like business owner to entrepreneur because I've seen the same pattern, but being in that get to get thing was, I couldn't wait to get out of that pun. pun well, yeah, yeah, but it's just, uh, I'd be interested in that actually, because I thought that was interesting in the book. So you, you're going through what you're calling a get to get phase of trying to hustle, getting kind of, well, explain what you mean by get to get. So what my brain does, um, I think this is because high quick start, high follow through high fact finder. Like most of my days talking to very high quick start, low follow through true visionaries have a bunch of people that work for them. They're full ideators all over the place. And then I'm like, that's a great idea. I'll simplify that into a pattern. Just as important. Talk to them. And they're like, Oh, Hey, I never see my family or never had a family or my life's in disarray. I'm like, that's a bad idea. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So it's really as simple as that. So talk to geniuses who are changing the world. Great idea. I'll activate, maximize, uh, achieve that into my, into my life. Those are my top three strength finders, activate, maximize, achieve almost dead last in ideation. And then, Hey, going through a fourth divorce. Um, uh, I, I hate all my employees. Uh, uh, this isn't working. This is a disaster. That's a bad idea. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. So that's, that's literally as simple as it is. So the four levels that I see, for anyone starting a company, I see this time and time again, is first get to get full get to get. That's totally fine. Reached out to 5,000 people to get uh, first five clients strictly getting. Okay. I think that's a, that's fine. Just, you know, find it start there. A lot of people stay there. I don't know why if you want to stay at 0.1%, uh, you know, success rate, but some people stay at that. Then there's get to give. So you're mostly getting, you're giving a little bit, giving an intro, giving some advice, but you're mostly trying to get. Definitely most business owners, most humans stay at that. Then there's the third stage give to get, you know, give six intros to get two. You you give all this value to get some clients back. So you're mostly giving, but you still have a, a desire to, to get something. Then you get to a true entrepreneur, true entrepreneur, um, not a business owner, not a consultant, not a human, whatever that is. Um, that's you give to give, but only to the people who get it, give to get. So I will endlessly give endlessly, but it's only to the people who understand what I'm talking about and who actually get it. Cause if you give to give to someone who doesn't get it, that's a complete waste of your time. And that takes time away from me and my family, which is what I really actually care about. And then people who give to give to the people who get it, do not want to be introduced to people who don't get it. They don't, that's a waste of their time. And then the person who doesn't get it, won't get it anyway. Uh, yeah. That's quite interesting. Cause if you're a giving person and you're um, creative and you've got lots of ideas and you like, you're caring and you're, you want to make do some good in the world, you can give a lot of stuff out. But there are yep. people who um, will just take that and it doesn't go anywhere or perhaps they, they don't, don't get it. They don't get it. Exactly. And I think there's a, the, 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 all the people I, I'm assuming, which is what you mean by the people that get it, are the people that then will reciprocate. And in that way that kind of will go, okay, I get it. I get what you're trying to achieve here. There's a bigger purpose here and I can contribute to that. Is that, that what 100%. you mean? 100%. That's 100%. Yeah, because they get it and they know they're creating real value. Um, and then... So to simplify this, because you're you're a really good simplifier. Most really good entrepreneurs are simplifiers. So Dan Sullivan, strategic coach, he's a simplifier. Peter Diamandis, Abundance 360. People think he's a multiplier. He's actually a true simplifier. So the purpose of my life is to be a connecting superhero for every visionary, abundance, investment, mindset entrepreneur, not business owner, not consultant, not entrepreneur, and share their stories with the world. So the people that in my mind, in my world, and my network get it are visionaries who live in abundance, who look at things as investments, not costs. Those are 
because business owners look at things as costs, not investments. That's and that's not an entrepreneur. They don't get it. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the, it's funny. My my business um, builds digital products for entrepreneurs, often right. very early stage startups. And there is a, a definite um, sort of worldview shift or mindset shift between those who see the world as investments and those who see things as costs to sort of minimize or investments to, to, to sort of maximize. And I think that's an important point just for in general applies, it's applicable. And I think that's, it's, so taking one's message to people who will get it, I think is really important. Now, just coming back to the other story, so you've got these things going, and now what you were getting a flavor of is where you're now, your brain is now. So you've gone from this kind of relative scarcity mindset, I'm hustling, I'm hustling, but it's a lot of waste. You're getting this 0.1% success rate, and it's kind of, and you can do that because you've got this sort of journalistic grind, hustle, DNA, genetic sort of hustle in your in your bones. So you can do that, but it's kind of like kind of punishing. And then you, now you're at a place of, of as, as you're describing, a much more different place, much freer, much more open, much more entrepreneurial, much more visionary. Now, in the process of, of getting there, can you just sort of explain, you, could, you have these two businesses, there's a PR business and a kind of, I guess, a networking business. How did you bounce your way up from being this kind of no experience, 0.1% success, success criteria, green and, and, and naive guy in the world of entrepreneurship to a, to a dude who's, who's got... Um, entrepreneurs like Peter Diamandis writing. So uh, people who don't know, Peter, Peter Diamandis, who, who um, I look up to very much, has written the, the, is, a, is an entrepreneur who founded the X Prize. And the yeah. X Prize was what became then SpaceX, with the, the first X Prize. He's a bit of a dude. And he's written very many, very good books. And I, I, he's a hero of mine. Okay. Now, Peter Diamandis has written the foreword of, of, uh, of Justin's book, Epic Life, um, which is a real uh, sort of a notable thing to have. So just kind of explain how how do you get and end up hanging out with Peter Diamandis and people and all these amazing people where only the, like a few years ago really you were this new guy on the block with a very different kind of understanding of the world. How does that how do you, how do you bounce your way to that kind of level? So besides you're either born like this or you're not, which that's I mean again that, that's that's what it is. But um, so again, my brain simplifies it simplifies everything into patterns. Okay. Um, all, all the new book is, is just simplified patterns in each chapters. Here's a process answer. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. Cause less is more, but, um, so this is a, a very good pattern that I've seen certainly for my life, for sure, because you have to be a litmus test yourself for the people you serve visionaries, abundance, investment, mindset, entrepreneurs. So I'm a visionary abundance, investment, mindset, entrepreneur. And if you don't do it for yourself, then how can you serve people? If you're, okay. So, so the pattern is I keep making bigger investments in smaller rooms, but the people in those rooms are making bigger impact. Um, so write bigger checks to be in smaller and smaller rooms. People in those rooms are making bigger and bigger impacts. So that's rooms like abundance 360 strategic coach. Um, it just is to land the plane. Those rooms are each 25 K a year U S uh, to be in. I'd easily invest 50 K a year, at least e each in each of them. Cause that, that weeds out people who don't get it. Right. That allows me, that allows me to spend uh, biggest investment, most time in the smallest room, which is my family, where I can make the most impact. So it's the same formula, same formula. You just apply it to, you know, personal or business. So bigger investment, smaller room, bigger impact. Okay. So it did not start, you talk about leapfrog. It did not start at 25,000. <laughs> it didn't start at that. Okay. So I think the first group, which I'm still in, because I'm loyal, but the first group is $250 a year U S and went into that room and started talking like this. And no one understood what I was talking about. Why? Because they're not, <laughs> they're not people like us. So then it was a $500 then it was a thousand a year. Then there was a 2000. I think in the 2000, there might've been one out of 50 that understood there might've been one out of 50 like us. Then there was a 5,000, it was maybe maybe one out of thirty. Then, then it was a ten thousand, ten thousand a year. Um, that was in twenty nineteen. That's when I first joined Strategic Coach, the first level. Um, I would say maybe one out of fifteen understood some that we stuff that we would talk about. Then, then, um, then joined the twenty five k a year. So 
I guess that's an interesting thing that you said about leapfrog because that's what it is from a financial investment thing, but it's the same formula. So I just keep writing bigger checks. But it's, it's interesting here, and I think this is quite good for a British audience. We get a lot of, well, in fact, our audience is sort of half, well, 30% UK, 30% US, and 30% the rest of the world. But a lot of the UK audience are a bit kind of, it's a funny culture over here about investing into things like, as you said, Abundance 360 or strategic mm-hmm. coach. There's a sort of, they're very much, I would say, a cost mindset about that sort of stuff. And what's interesting with what you have described is you uh, chose to take a, perhaps a leap of faith in your own future and the investment you will make for that by by getting yourself in the room with these interesting people who share your mindset and and so looking back um at the sort of last five years and you've been sort of getting yourself into smaller rooms what would be the biggest benefit of having done that well that's i mean again it's the same formula i get to spend the most time with my family right i mean that's the some sorry sometimes i answer the questions before so here's is um i uh, this is my eight fact finder kicking in is the is the UK or Britain's motto "God in my right"? Is that is that what it is? Is that or like? Not that I know of, no. But like, um, what is it? Because the I'm UK, thinking- <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it depends who you speak to. There, 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 um, I, there tends to be. A, it, 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 I would say the UK tends to be quite kind of. Well, Justin's book, by the way, is full of very. I would say U.S. energy. His epic life. And no matter you- where the people live. So this is why this is okay. This, this is why I asked because so U.S. is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Canadian or uh, Canada, um, their motto is peace, order, and good government, which is a fit that. And so here's this is this will answer your this is this is answers your question, right? Yeah. So that's why I asked about the U.K. So. So I talk to a lot of Canadians, but they're not Canadian. They're Americans because they're entrepreneurs. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You're you're an American. You're not. I mean, wherever you live, that doesn't. You're American because you're life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Most Americans are Canadian. Peace, order, and good government. Most Americans are not American. They're not. They're not life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They're peace, order, and good government. That's mo- that's most of the world, by the way. So that's why I asked what UK is. If you can, well, find I, did, it- I, I think the UK is probably grumbling about everything. Is probably the motto of the UK, and it, there's, there's a lot of kind of uh, right. there's a lot of that goes on. And um, but I think there's a, a bit here of kind of actually just sort of putting yourself out there and believing in your future and having that kind of uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, exactly. That's what- yeah, that, yeah, and it's definitely something that I think is kind of good to plug into yourself as a British entrepreneur, at least. You, you just touched on something I, want, I do want to get into with the time we have, which is about the smallest room that you want to be in, which is with your family. And one of the great things in the book, uh, Epic Life, is about the concept of life, I would say, as a whole, not just life as an entrepreneur. And you, you said as well that, that you spoke you spoke to lots of people and you see these patterns and some of the negative patterns that you've seen, which I think I'd like to focus on here uh, because of the nature of the podcast, is people losing their families into their fourth divorces, people having disconnection from their children. Can you just like, speak on that pattern and then how uh, you see the sort of importance of to have an epic life, the importance of family within that? Because you, you really do stress that within the book. So this is this is why I was excited to talk to you. Because you, you like to, if you look at a volleyball analogy, you're like the setter, like you see it. Okay. Set and then I'll, you know, outside hitter or middle blocker hit it, you know, hit it over the net, but it's a team effort to get the point. So this is, this is, again, this is what I see time and time again, you know, talk to top entrepreneurs on planet and I see the same patterns. And so there's, there's those four things. Okay. Bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy to depression Three, the highest level of anxiety you can imagine. Four, likely and or possible traumatic experiences as a child or young adult. So what does that mean? Entrepreneurs at the highest level are the very most damaged people with the best coping skills. Most damaged, best coping skills. Most people can't take those four things and turn it into, you know, most people in 2017, their companies falling apart, can't, re- they can't rebound. They can't, one, they wouldn't have the company. Two, they wouldn't take the all that and then, talk to Peter Diamandis and then be like, Oh, okay. Now the company's great. Okay. So what does that mean? The best coping skills are used to create new company, create second company, create third company, expand around the world. Many times those coping skills are used to do that. And at the expense of ever having a family and at the expense of spending any time with family members or anything meaningful in their life. 
So I can't tell you, I talk to one to two people like us every single week, every single week. <clears throat> and this is very sad, by the way, this is why I wrote the book, right? You have this podcast to genuinely help people. I wrote the book to genuinely help you. So talk to one to two people like us every single week that have let entrepreneur life destroy their family life or prevented them from ever having a family. So they have all this stuff and they have nothing. They have all this material stuff and they have, they have nothing, nothing. And so uh, being, this is where journalism was a great gift because you don't get into that for employee account, revenue, office space. I don't, understand i don't care about any of that stuff it's immaterial pun intended it's totally immaterial all i want to do is spend time with my family and grow a network on a global level why because this other stuff is just stuff and without those without family anything meaningful there's nothing so that was the whole point of writing the book is like you can actually not only do both but you can do it in a collaborative way it's not one or the other it's combined it's both yeah, and I, I think it's a, um, a really important lesson there of why, what is the point of the process, of the, the journey we're on? If we're all on track. 100%. Why are you doing this? Yeah, why exactly. Why are you doing this? Well I, well, I know the answer to that is because they're so damaged. I mean, this is not universally, but this is, for the most part, so damaged they have something to prove. They have, and the proof is the material stuff. And many times that is at the expense of anything. I mean... So that's what it, it's, you talk about the red in the water, the red ocean, it's kill every, it's, yeah, it's just blood in the water. And then by the way, oh yeah, families in the water, a lot of blood there. That's really interesting that you said that, because that's what it is. You just destroyed your family. It's, it's funny, I, I know, I'm for sure I, I had, in the run up to my 2017 blow up, I kind of got the prior, maybe it, it, it chase, let's call it chasing fame and money versus chasing some level of purpose. And you know all, any all kind of external validation, be that you know, you know winning awards or a, a beautiful car or whatever, is ultimately um, doesn't is is a hollow win. There's a really great book on this by a guy who also um, has a Chicago connection, a guy called David Brooks from the New York Times. He writes for the New York Times. He's got a book called The Second Mountain, and the Second Mountain is is about or well, basically you climb the first mountain, fame and money, and it's kind of pretty not great up there. Uh, or you fall off it when you're pursuing it, like you get divorced or, or something happens. Or, <laughs> that's and then, a pyrrhic victory. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That. It's a total pyrrhic victory. And I think this is why why I think your book's important because it's, it sort of very bluntly articulates how important it is to have that focus on your wife and your children and, the, and, and how you've integrated that into your family, uh, into your, sorry, into your uh, business entrepreneurial mindset and life in the sense of you've got a, a balance between the purpose-led entrepreneurial life and a uh, which serves uh, your deeper meaning which is to be there and be present for your family and, and to be to be appreciative of that and to, to add value to that and and, and in fact tell, tell everybody what are you doing later today yeah right after this so uh to time stamp this it's uh eight it's two forty five p.m your time eight forty five a.m uh chicago time and uh so i'm i'm uh Dress for success here because uh, the book fair at my son, my sons are, uh, our sons are um, 10 and 8, so fourth grade, third grade. And so I'm helping to run the book fair, which, by the way, that is very hard for me to do that. That is not a comfortable situation, <laughs> but I'll do it. And then my wife and my wife's all, she's off today. Um, so she and I are passing out lunch. Uh, we're lunch volunteers. So that's what I mean. Like, if you don't actually do it, if you talk about it and then don't do it, what's the point? I just, I'll just do it. So, and then yesterday as well, I ran the book fair. So uh, strategic coach calls them free days or whatever, um, free days where you don't work or whatever. But so like, I have a lot of free days because I like to spend time with my family because that's where you actually create meaning in life is, you know, spending time with loved ones and creating things that are meaningful. So I'm really excited to do that. Um, it's definitely not my world. It's very confusing. Uh, um, you, I'm usually the only dad that's there, usually. <laughs> most of the and uh so i kind of keep quiet <laughs> but, but i do like i like talking to my kids and seeing them in school and then i try not to embarrass them oh uh, well that, that, there's, there's no chance of you not embarrassing them i've, I've had a career, i'm in a career of embarrassing my children so i want, I want everybody to sort of, um sort of take a lesson here there's, there's some really i think important 
clarity of the point of life. You know, there's no point jumping into this entrepreneurial thing. I know there's a lot of people who listen to the podcast who are perhaps early stage in their entrepreneurial journey and they're looking for kind of that candid advice that we get on, on the podcast. But, but, but don't sacrifice the, 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 your life and your family and your relationships for the, the, the serving the, the uh, entrepreneurial shiny object that you people get focused on because ultimately that stuff is hollow. Or you say it's a pyrrhic victory. Right, we're edging towards our end of our time together, and I want to—I'm I, kind of really keen to find out because you've got this great book, which is in effect a, is a collation of thirty different concepts. I think it's thirty, uh, which you've collated and clarified and really got down to some actionable points. They are very punchy. Like I say, it's full of good, optimistic energy, which I—I I, I really appreciated. Uh, there's also—it's full of advice. Your book, and we've been dispensing wisdom left, right, and centre here, just throwing it out like pearls. To our audience, what what advice should entrepreneurs ignore? Wow. So why I said wow because that's such an important question. And you said what, which is also interesting to me. Um, I will rephrase that by who or with who or whom. Whom I always screwed that up. In journalists, you have to uh, write at a third grade level, and so I always screw up who and whom. So. Uh, whom should you, you should ignore that. Okay. Whom should you ignore? Whom? Okay. So there are three types of people in, in the business entrepreneur world that I completely ignore completely, completely. And, uh, on strength finders, this is easier for me to do than most people. There's 34 of them. I'm dead last in empathy, second to last in includer. Now for people like you, I have endless empathy. For, right, for people making excuses, I don't understand it. I sympathize. I don't understand. I can't understand. It makes no sense. So here are the, the three types of the who's or whom's that ignore, don't do. One, boring people. Boring. Entrepreneurs like you, opposite of boring. Two, mediocre. People that make excuses. People that don't, won't reach out to 5,000 people to Find first five clients, people that won't get back in the plane without a parachute. So boring, mediocre. Three, most important, by far the most important, time vampires, talkers. Talkers are takers. And the only reason I'm talking now is because you're interviewing me. Normally, I don't really say that much. It's all result, result, action, action, action. Time vampires are the worst. They talk and they don't actually do anything. Um, and so those are the what not to do or who to avoid, whom to avoid. That's really great. So there's um, three types of people to avoid there. Get them on your radar. Boring people, mediocre people, and time vampires. Yeah, that's a really good, good advice, that. I think, you know, you, you know, why hang around with boring, mediocre time vampires? We don't want them in our lives. Most of the world. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Let's get away world. from those people. Yeah, no, I think that's very good, very, very good advice. And there's a whole, there's so much stuff I wanted to get into with you uh, on this conversation, which we didn't get a chance to. And I would recommend, therefore, you go and buy uh, Epic Life um, because it's really good. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I think around the theme of finding balance as well is it's very a thread that goes throughout the book and. That for me, I think is really important. Um, and then it's really uh, something I strive for uh, personally. And, and then there's a really, without giving away all the trade secrets, there's a really great end uh, sort of story about playing, about enjoying the process of playing in your life and not taking it perhaps too seriously and, and, and treading lightly through life. And I think that, again, is something I try and live out. And of course, every day, you know, we have our ups and downs and anxieties. But I think to re retain a sense of play. I think it's very important and I know something that, that that balance, that ability to sort of be connected to your family and, and to put things into context, I think is really important. So, so where can we find more about you, uh, Justin? Where, where's, where, where will people connect with you? You know, the, the company site is brepicllc.com, B-R-E-P-I-C-L-L-C.com. And the only reason I mentioned that is because there's a, a mindset uh, scorecard survey. It takes five minutes. People love it. Um, and people, it's really interesting. They actively qualify or disqualify themselves with their own mindset. So strongly recommend taking that. And uh, where, do you, and you, what about social media? You're on Twitter? Oh yeah, sorry. So <laughs> it's hard for me to land the plane, sir. <laughs> so we're up flying the plane. Um, no, I mean, I have, I have about 50,000 followers, um, mo a lot on LinkedIn and Twitter. So Justin Breen, LinkedIn, Twitter, certainly Facebook and Instagram, all that stuff. So, game, you want to be epic, get some epic in your business and your life. 
Check out Justin, get in his books, get in his, his, his Twitter and LinkedIn uh, content, get, engage with him and sort of absorbing some of this great energy. And I think we've heard a great story of someone taking that opportunity. And, and this is what I love about these conversations. I get to hear the ins and outs of how we rebuild our lives when things have gone wrong, quotes on quotes, but have gone actually creating a new opportunity for you to take, to take advantage of. And, and people like us, us entrepreneurial types who are compelled to sort of pursue that can actually make something of it. So uh, thank you so much for sharing so openly, uh, Justin. Please um, uh, check him out more and I'll see everybody next time. Do you want to get the top five tip bits from each episode email to your inbox every Friday? Yes, you do. It saves you having to go through and make notes and make a note of all the books and all the ideas that are in the podcast. We go through, we choose the top five we like, plus put all the links into that email. So if you just go up to honeyibluupthebusiness.com, yes, that's honeyibluupthebusiness.com, and just enter your email address. There's a little box, just enter it in, and we will send you that information. And it saves you having to make notes and all that. That's uh, make your life a bit easier. And of course, if you did enjoy the episode, please consider subscribing. We are trying to help people through this. So the more people that subscribe, review, rate on Apple, Google, Podcasts, Spotify, the more people will see it and the more we can help. So help us help other people, other entrepreneurs like you. And before I go, I've got to say big up to my company, the tech department, the company we blew up and put back together again. They're generously supporting me on this mission through the podcast. So if you guys want to have a look at a company that can really help you improve your technology, make it better so your business gets better to boosting your sales and your profit and a bit more sanity in your life, a little less stress, then head up to the techdept.com, the tech department, uh, my company. Uh, give us a look. On behalf of all of us here, thank you for listening. And I'll see you next time.